Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday. It is August 1st. We, we have begun the first peak month of the hurricane season over here in the Atlantic, and we have an active system to watch right now east of the Antilles Islands, Invest 91L. And what an interesting invest this has certainly been over the last couple of days. It's really given us the runaround in terms of guessing when it's finally going to develop. Its organization has been less than perfect over the last couple of days, and it's been very complicated, and it's still rather complicated this morning. At first glance, on the large screen, it looks like we have a decent ball of convection and what probably has an area of low pressure developing into a tropical depression. But if we zoom in on this, on the floater, we can see that there is a little bit more going on to it than that. The sun is just now coming up and what we can see is that the winds in here are still out of the southeast and the recon data is coming in from the plane right now and what I just looked at showed that this is confirmed, that the winds are still out of the southeast to the southwest of this convective blob in here. So what we can see is on the visible satellite, it's a little bit hard to see, but there is a broad and elongated circulation right here, centered right here which is the leftover circulation that was the western circulation that we talked about yesterday. Remember there were two different spins to this system. This is the western one here that split away from the tropical wave finally. If we go back to the big screen, the tropical wave we talked about yesterday is now over here, past Puerto Rico overnight and left this old circulation behind in here. This is the old eastern circulation in here. So the reality is that they have not yet fully combined or merged. So this old one is back here rather thunderstormless without much convection over it and still fairly broad and then it has a tongue extending up here and there's a little bit of a vorticity maximum right near the southwestern edge of this convective ball and what the recon found was fairly high pressures in this area overall 1011 millibars right near this lobe of low pressure and then 1013 millibars just off to its northeast so we have a little bit of a finger of low pressure in here but there is no closed circulation and the broad spin is still down here what should eventually happen is that this will eventually continue to weaken as this finger rotates up towards the north of it and eventually starts to develop more well-defined circulation as it passes the islands and should eventually close off. However, it's anyone's guess as to how soon that's going to be. The good news right now for the islands and for Puerto Rico is the fact that this has remained weak and has not developed yet. And the fact that it's not developing so fast means that a farther south track is possible as it comes through the Northeast Caribbean. And what we may be looking at is a situation where Puerto Rico could possibly be spared this system, but at the expense of the Dominican Republic and Haiti perhaps getting the heavy rains from this system. And we'll look at that in a second. One thing about development for this system is that as it moves into the Central and Eastern Caribbean, generally when they're not developed yet, we look at this to be a dead zone where these systems don't really want to develop because the trade winds are generally very strong in the Central Caribbean and cause surface divergence, which causes sinking air and makes it hard for thunderstorm activity to thunderstorm activity to continue. It also makes it hard for tropical waves to amplify into closed lows. If we look at the ASCAT though, the winds in the central and eastern Caribbean right now aren't exceeding 15 knots or even 20 knots right now in here, which is a bit lighter than normal, which is good news for the wave because it will have it a little bit easier to develop in this area as it moves in south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic in here, but it is still going to be a little bit of a negative factor as it moves into this area. The other thing to notice here is this massive glob of convection to the southeast of 91L, north of northeastern South America in here. This is very interesting because this is the intertropical convergence zone right in here, where a lot of thunderstorms are going off. And this is an unforeseen factor that's coming into play now because the outflow from this system is actually starting to shear 91L. If we go over here to the floater, notice the cirrus clouds coming up out of the south here, starting to push this these thunderstorms a little bit to the north of where the center of low pressure is trying to develop in here so the upper level environment is actually a little bit less favorable than it was yesterday and the day before and so there's a little bit of a struggle going on now eventually as this system moves off to the west and northwest here it will get out of this area where the intertropical convergence zone is firing strongly and will have a better upper level environment and unfortunately which we'll talk about later in future days. We're going to talk more about the track today, but eventually as it gets towards this area, the upper level conditions will probably be its best right in here 
as it's near the Bahamas, the Florida, and southwestern Atlantic area. So the most strengthening that will occur from it will probably be north of the Caribbean in this area. But again, we'll talk more about track today. These are the track models from this morning, and we can see that they're bringing a tight swath over in this direction, and notice how most of them are now sparing Puerto Rico. By no means should they let their guard down on this right now, as it is still very possible that they are in their window in the window for 91L to move into this area. However, the fact that it is weaker now and not really developing for the moment and taking its time means that it could slip a little bit farther south before getting pulled north and thus now the consensus is over Hispaniola and the fact that it isn't developing means that Puerto Rico may be spared. But again, don't let your guard down yet if you live there because things can change. We've seen the models change already all over the place just in a couple of days. Things do change in the tropics, so just keep your guard up until the system is actually going by. Notice that they're bringing it pretty far west now and that comes right through the Bahamas. These models are now shifting west, showing the possibility that we've been talking about of this possibly impacting Florida down the road and not necessarily curving out to sea and hitting nothing but ocean. And again, we can see on the water vapor, this trough is digging in over the eastern United States. This is propagating eastward now. And as this moves over the western Atlantic over the next couple of days, that should induce more of a northwestern motion, which means that a track like the Canadian has brought this through the Caribbean now and into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. I consider that an outlier solution at this point. I still think that with this trough coming into the western Atlantic, this will induce more of a northwesterly motion at some point and bring this north of the Caribbean islands into the Bahamas area in a few days. So staying in the Caribbean is probably not that likely with this system. Now if we go over here to the GFS, we're going to use this again for illustrative purposes. This is 72 hours, 500 millibar. We can see the trough off of the eastern seaboard here. Here's Invest 91L just southeast of Puerto Rico. Notice that there's a very clear break in the ridge. We have the Texas Ridge over here. We have the Atlantic Ridge nosing in over here. A clear break has developed in between, which should allow this to sneak north of the Caribbean islands, whether it be over Puerto Rico, in between Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, or over the Dominican Republic itself. Either one of those is going to come across and make it north of the islands in time. If we go out to day four, we can see that the GFS takes it over the Dominican Republic. Notice the trough is already starting to lift out as we have a double shortwave structure. The jet is flatter in here and this is not going to be sticking around very long as it kicks out to the east. And again, a little piece trying to split off here. This kind of faded away on yesterday's runs, but showing up again on the GFS, a little bit of a piece is splitting off. Tiny trough split that will retrograde westward here, which may be a player down the road in the track of this system, but we will see how much of a trough split we actually get here. If we go out to day five, here's the system now over the southeastern Bahamas, and notice as the trough leaves, we've got more of a ridge trying to nose into its north here. And again, we have this big ridge over the southern U.S. that's going to make it hard for this to continue west-northwest forever. For if we keep going here, it's going to be able to move west-northwest long enough that it will threaten Florida here if this pattern actually verifies. This kind of a ridge in here argues for this to come into Florida and then try to curve out. And indeed, if we go out to day six here, we have it over south Florida on the GFS. And then we have a short wave over the eastern U.S. that will eventually try to curve it out. So day seven, it runs over the length of Florida, and then day eight, it comes out over the water and curves out. Again, not a pattern if this verifies with this northwesterly jet stream cutting across here. It's a pattern that's not going to favor a sweeping turn up into North Carolina on its way out. It favors an extremely sharp recurve like this off to the northeast or east-northeast, which means that the only way I can really see this affecting the United States is if this comes into South Florida and then turns out fast like this. This is something that the GFS is now showing on the 6C run at least. It'll be interesting to see if this becomes that is adopted by some of the other models. And again, I still want to see how this looks as it makes it towards the northeastern Caribbean islands, be it to the Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico. We need to see how developed it's actually going to get. And chances are 
that it may not be all that strong given that its organization is still struggling right now with a broad area of low pressure that isn't fully focused under the convection yet and if these models are correct if this moves over the Dominican Republic the mountains here would probably tear this up quite a bit and thus we may be looking at a weaker system over here if it gets over into the Bahamas at which point it would have two to three days before it reached the Florida area if it moves there again we're gonna see swings in the models here and I want to see how it looks in here before I make a call but it's becoming more likely that Florida gets affected because as usual the models are having to correct for the pattern and are shifting farther west they were way out here just a couple of days ago they've shifted significantly west and thus there is more of a concern now for Florida down the road but we do have these folks down here to be concerned about first and they should be the ones preparing right now if it went over Hispaniola it would be another massive flooding event that these folks don't need this island gets major disaster even if only a tropical disturbance moves over and brings heavy rain over those mountains there so that's what we're dealing with right now a struggling system with pressures that are higher than they were the recon not finding a closed circulation here this will probably end up developing eventually but it's taking its time which means a more southern and western track is possible and we could be threatening the Bahamas and Florida down the road but first comes Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic the Puerto Rico may be spared as this is weaker and comes a little bit farther south but they shouldn't let their guard down either and Hispaniola should be preparing as well for a possible tropical cyclone or at least a lot of heavy rain if this moves right over the island. So we will continue to watch this and monitor it today to see if a closed circulation develops and we get Tropical Depression 5 or Tropical Storm Emily from this. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.